Chairperson, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I had the privilege of going to Somaliland to draft a legal aid bill. Now, just to make sure that everybody understands where Somaliland is, there's a little map which indicates that it's the northern part of what is sometimes referred to as Somalia as a whole. And this position is, is, was part of the problem we had in putting together this legislation. Because although uh, Somaliland had gained uh, independence in 1960, it then united with other parts to form Somalia as it is generally known. But after a long and protracted civil war, uh, it declared its dependent, independence in 1991. It has a population of 3.5 million, and it has regular peaceful elections. It has also experienced a change of government. It is a constitutional democracy with a multi-party system. But here's the problem. It is not recognized as an independent state. Now that, of course, poses its own challenges. But despite that particular situation, uh, Somaliland uh, maintains contact with many countries and many international organizations. And that is where, uh, we have a problem again, next slide please, where uh, the United Nations, the UNODC also come in. Uh, part of the situation is that the UNODC is bolstering the justice system in uh, uh, sorry, now we're way ahead, but it's, it's working. So it's the third time lucky. Uh, the UNODC is trying to assist in, in bolstering the uh, legal system in Somaliland, but there are problems. And Professor McCoy Mason referred to a number of them in other jurisdictions. Those were very much the same that we experienced in Somaliland. So, uh, first of all, to give you a bit of a background on what the situation is in Somaliland. There's a mixture of state legal aid and private legal aid. <coughs> in the limited cases where uh, legal aid was mandatory, nearly one third of the accused did not receive legal aid. So there were a number of problems. Uh, in Hargeisa, which is the capital of Somaliland, we had three lawyers providing legal representation in 107 cases. The budget, annual budget for the court-appointed scheme is 5,000 US dollars. Now, you will recognize that that is a very limited uh, situation. The principle of legal aid is not denied by anyone or challenged by anyone, but the practical implementation is the problem. Now, as I indicated, uh, Somaliland is a constitutional democracy, so the constitution itself provides a background for uh, legal aid, and that is Article 28.3, which says the state must provide legal, free legal defense. But over and above that, the Constitution also says that Somaliland recognizes and will enact with the United Nations Charter and with international law. So the point of departure was never in doubt, but it was the practical implementation that caused a problem. Now, the legal framework design, uh, obviously there are many sources that one, one, one can uh, uh, look at. Uh, I've listed some of them. Of course, the principles and guidelines will now be the principal source of information when drafting new uh, legislation. Now, we developed a legal aid bill, which uh, is recognized as being an essential element of the functioning justice system. It is the pro uh, 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 it is the responsibility of Somaliland, the state, to provide the legal aid, although there are private initiatives as well. And then uh, legal aid is, is to be provided subject to uh, eligibility rules. Now, one of the problems we experienced was that uh, you need to provide legal aid of quality. The mere fact that there's legal aid isn't sufficient. Uh, and one of the problems we found is that there weren't sufficient lawyers. I think this is probably something that happens in, in other places as well. Uh, many of the problems uh, that was in the question <coughs> listed, we also uh, came across the fact that uh, everybody concentrated on the capital, that the rural areas, nobody was there. The, the problems of having a sustainable funding model, all of those problems were present. So we tried to provide for 
all of these problems within the legal aid bill. Providing for mandatory eligibility in criminal cases only at the moment, number one, where the death penalty is a competent uh, uh, finding, where a person is held on charges of high treason, sedition, or other crimes against the state, the accused is younger than 15 years, the accused is mentally incompetent, does not understand either Somali or English, or is a bona fide refugee or asylum seeker. But provision is made specifically that the Minister of Justice can, by regulation, extend this category. And the purpose of this was, because we know this is an ongoing development, it is not something which happens overnight. And given the circumstances, the lack of sustainable funding, uh, we thought it wise to make sure that the, the Legal Aid Bill, once enacted, will provide a framework that will allow for a step-by-step -step development. Now, uh, we've also put in provisions dealing with conditional uh, provision of legal aid in criminal cases, again, where the Minister will broaden the, the categories of, of cases where legal aid must be provided, also in civil cases, and then lastly, in cases where a court deems it in the interests of justice. So we have provided a framework which will allow for the development over time. One of the problems we encountered was the fact, not so much that people were not aware of their right to legal aid, but that specifically police officers, correctional services officers, did not, did not want to allow detained persons to make use of their right to legal aid or just the right to legal representation. So we've provided for an, a mechanism that any person who detains another one, be it a police officer, correctional services officer, or anyone else, must immediately inform the detained person of his or her rights in respect of legal aid. And we have also provided that if that is not done, the detention will be unlawful, which is a fairly severe uh, mechanism to use, but we hope will be an effective one. Uh, we've also made provision for the mandatory placing of posters in detention centers so that information can also be spread uh, visually, not only by word of mouth. And very importantly, we've provided for disciplinary proceedings where uh, relevant persons do not provide or, or do not comply with their duty to inform detained persons. Uh, we also make it mandatory that where legal aid is refused, that written reasons must be provided forthwith, so that it can be challenged if necessary. And then we've provided for a focused legal aid unit within the ministry, which must monitor the efficacy of the system, but also provide information and ensure that the system works. To make sure that Legal aid is something that benefits the whole country. We've provided for a legal aid oversight committee. It uh, has representatives from all the st major stakeholders. So it's not only a government in initiative. Uh, the legal profession, the universities, uh, the legal aid providers, and other NGOs will be represented. And the, the main essence, uh, or the main purpose of this oversight committee is to ensure that on a broad front that legal aid is provided in Somaliland. We've also provided for a public defender council and this council is uh, supposed to establish, implement and oversee the proposed public defender scheme. Because of the problems with geologic, geological, uh, geographical spread in terms of the availability of legal aid, we have proposed that a public defender scheme be instituted so that legal aid can be provided in all corners of Somaliland. Now, there are special measures to provide for the independence, uh, special measures for uh, in ensuring that government does not try to take over the uh, work of the Public Defender Council. So, public defenders will be employed by this council will not be uh, state employees or government employees, but will be independent, fully-fledged legal representatives. Lastly, we've made provision for the use of paralegals. Uh, this has not been 
fully fleshed out in the legislation. Obviously, regulations will amplify the act. Uh, we also require lawyers to provide pro bono services. And then we also make provision that the minister may interact with private institutions uh, for donor funding or other types of assistance to ensure that we uh, provide a, a legal safety net as far as possible. Now, the bill is currently uh, in the process of being presented to the Council of Ministers, which is the cabinet of the government of Somaliland. Uh, from there, it will go to Parliament. Hopefully, it will be adopted without uh, Parliament striking out too many of the provisions that we've provided for. Uh, one of the main challenges is now is the development of the Public Defender Scheme. Obviously, it will take time, and needless to say, it will take money. Uh, so funding, sustainable funding, is, a, is, is a, 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 a one of the, the key challenges. The training of adequate numbers of lawyers and of paralegals is very important. And then lastly, uh, public education. And by public education, we don't only mean the general public, but especially police officers, correctional services officers, the people who deal with those who are most in need of legal aid. Uh, hopefully, we uh, would, will be able to announce sometime or other that uh, Somaliland now has a legal, aid bill, a legal Aid Act, which enables the people of Somaliland to have access to legal aid.